Hello guys, welcome to 321 exams. There is something we can't do without. Man can't do without it. Animals can't do without it. It's very, very, very vital. When you take it out of this life, everyone will be dead. So it's very, very vital in the universe. Now what am I talking about? Now somebody is confused. I'm talking about the mixture of gases found everywhere. Are you getting me? And what's that gas? We're talking about air. So today we are going to look at what air. Now our outline today is the usual gas constituent, the proportion of oxygen in air, uses of noble gases. Now what are the constituents of air? As you know, air is made up of oxygen. Oxygen. Air is also made up of um, nitrogen. Air is also made up of what? Carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide. So let me write carbon dioxide first. Or carbon for oxide. Are you with me? Then air is also made up of um, rare gases. And what was given to you in your syllables was argon and neon. Air is also made up of water vapor. Water vapor. Now the percentage of of oxygen oxygen is made up of 21 percent in air you have nitrogen nitrogen gas 78 percent carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide which is what um, 0 0.03 percent very minute you have rare gases you have one percent and we have water vapor Which is what? What that vapor is what? It varies. So it's a variable. I get it. So these are the constituents of air oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, rare gases, or water vapor. Now let's talk about the, 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 the evidences of, of air, the reasons for the existence of air as a mixture. One, the constituent of air can be separated by physical method. Now, when we say air is a mixture of gases found everywhere, I mean, when we talked about um, element compound and mixtures, the mixture is a combination of two or more constituents that can be separated by ordinary physical what methods. And what we have here, the constituents of air, which are mixtures, can be separated by what physical what method. If all the pro appropriate proportion of each of the different constituents of air mixed together under ordinary conditions, there will be no chemical reaction. So if you mix, um, if you mix this together, it will not give you any chemical reaction. So there is no chemical world reaction, as I was talking about. When you mix the constituent of air together, it will give you no chemical world reaction so air cannot be represented by a chemical form formula but it has slightly variable composition from one environment to the other there is no chemical formula for air are you getting me it has no chemical formula that's why when you mix them together you can't get the constituents of air the gases you can't get any chemical formula but it has slightly variable composition from one environment to another but its composition from one environment to the another, there is slight, you know, variable, like, there is slight variable. That's what I say, it has, it has slight variable composition from one environment to the another. Now, now, after the separation, the constraints of air still retain their individual properties. For example, carbon four oxide can still turn lime water milky. I get to me. So, after you separate the constituent of air, now if I have air, 
and I take out oxygen, I take out carbon dioxide, I take out different constituents. I get they still retain their what properties, their individual properties. Like carbon dioxide, for example, we know that carbon dioxide turns lime water milky. So when you separate it from air, the property doesn't change. You can see turn lime water what milky, and um, oxygen can oxidize copper to what copper two. Are with me? So oxygen oxidizes copper to what copper two. Then I have Cu plus O2. Now you're going to give me CO. No. Two. So oxygen here oxidizes copper oxidation. Copper to what? Copper two. So the chemical properties doesn't what change. Now separation of air components. Now if air is liquefied at a very high temperature and pressure, pure nitrogen and oxygen can be separated out at different temperatures by fractional um, liquefi uh, liquefied air, by fractional distillation of liquefied what? air. Now remember we did fractional distillation of air when we did the production uh, of nitrogen, commercial production of nitrogen and oxygen, I would say they can be produced commercially or industrially by fractional distillation of what? Air. And we gave the diagram. In our diagram, we said oxygen and nitrogen can be separated out by the fractional distillation of what? Air. Now this happens that as we explain the fractional distillation of air, you know, when you go and when you check other previous topics on um, production of nitrogen and production of oxygen, so I won't emphasize this here more, you'll find that something that this air was first passed through caustic soda. It was first passed through caustic what? soda. The passive cost is that solution. Now, what is it removing? Our first constituent. What is it removing? It's removing what? CO2, which is carbon four oxide. Carbon four oxide is being removed. I get it. Then next, when it has passed to cost is that the nitrogen and the oxygen gas, O2 and N2, are compressed. Are compressed at high pressure are compressed at high what pressure and at that point turned to what liquid so first of all the air is passed through caustic soda so the function of caustic soda is to what separate it separates the what carbon four oxide it removes it so when it removes carbon four oxide you know that what is should be left are other constituents like um what's the name oxygen nitrogen are you with me now when it now gets to the fractionating column or before it gets to the fractionating column the air gets compressed and when it gets compressed the gas now becomes liquid so oxygen and nitrogen gas now gets liquefied and it gets to the fractionating column so when it gets to the fractionating column what happens there is going to be what separation the liquids now the liquids separates liquid what separates into nitrogen and oxygen Now, nitrogen gas, I get to me, evolves. But if I have a fascinating column like this, if I have a fascinating column like this, it's a fascinating column. So I have a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen gas. I get to me, I get to me. So when you get to the fascinating column, when you 
as in gets to the fascinating coming. For example, these are fascinating coming. Don't mind my diagram. Now, the nitrogen evolves out. I get it, it evolves at 190 minus 196 degrees Celsius. Between 193 to 196 minus one between minus 193 to minus 196 degrees Celsius. So the nitrogen gas evolves out. It goes out. I get it. Now when it goes out, it's leaving what's behind? It's leaving the oxygen gas. I get in which boils and is released here. It boils at minus 183 degrees Celsius and is re and is tapped off. Are you getting me? So you can see that nitrogen was taken and what? Oxygen was what? Taken. So the, the air is first passed through caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide solution, to remove what? Carbon four oxide. Then the O2. When the O2, the oxygen and nitrogen gases remain, are compressed at a high temperature, at a high pressure rather, and are turned into liquid as they approach into the fractionating column. So when they get into the fractionating column, what happens? The oxygen and nitrogen separate each other. The nitrogen evolves and goes out at minus 196 degrees Celsius, while the oxygen boils and is tapped off at what? minus 183 degrees what Celsius so you can see that nitrogen was separated oxygen was separated and what carbon four oxide was also what separated so that is very very important so now let's talk about the oxygen proportion in air oxygen proportion in air now we can know this by following your syllabus by burning what phosphorus when white phosphorus white phosphorus ignites spontaneously in the presence of oxygen, my white phosphorus is solid, ignites uh, spontaneously in the presence of oxygen, gas, at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Now the reaction proceeds like this. It gives me um, phosphorus 5 oxide. Sorry. I get to me. Now this, this phosphorus 5 oxide will be expelled. This white solid. This phosphorus 5 oxide is the white solid that is what expelled as smoke during the reaction. It's expelled as what smoke during the reaction. Uh, 5, yeah. I get to me. So this salt, this phosphorus, I get to me combines with um, five molecules of oxygen. Okay, five moles rather of oxygen molecules to give me phosphorus five oxide at 50 degrees what Celsius. Are you with me? Does that at what 50 degrees what Celsius. So this um, white phosphorus five oxide is what being expelled as what smoke during the reaction so that's one way we can also get the oxygen proportion in air by burning um, phosphorus in air so we burn phosphorus oxygen to get this which was expelled as what smoke during the what reaction now Using um, pyrogalol, let me add alkaline, alkaline pyrogalol. Are you with me? Now, pyrogalol, which pyrogalol? Now, another, it's, it's, it has a formula of CCH3. Are you with me? and OH3. Now this is an organic compound. Okay, it is called, I uh, call it benzene, benzene 